science fiction doesn't often tell you much about the future, but it very often tells you a great deal about the present in which it was made. I grew up in an age when uh, 1984, Brave New World, were recognised as being satires, parables about totalitarian government. They weren't perceived then as, as the, um, the astoundingly uh, sort of predictive texts that they are now. And we weren't coerced into this by government. We bought it, we asked for it, we demanded it. Um, my children have, have grown up in a world in which um, social exchange um, through social media is, is understood, the transaction is understood. We get this functionality and um, the people who, who give us the social media um, harvest the data and exploit it. My children understand that and they buy it. They have sacrificed, we have sacrificed the greater part of the privacy we once knew um, for the sake of uh, social communication and um, sort of uh, government, uh, good governance. Um, let me put some flesh on the bones of this quotation. Um, in the UK, there are 4.2 million closed-circuit uh, closed TV cameras, one for every 14 citizens. Um, if we look at a totalitarian state like China, that has one CCTV for every 472,000 of its citizens. Um, there have been over um, half a million authorizations for um, uh, uh, surveillance of data communication in the UK in 2009. There are 106,000, sorry, 106,710 CCTV cameras in schools in the UK. 825 of those are in changing rooms and lavatories. And big business is big brother too. Um, the the organisation um, Europe versus Facebook made a personal data request to Facebook for all the data that Facebook held on their Facebook group page. Um, I found this, it took me about 10 to 15 minutes of rummaging through Facebook to, to get to the data request. They're not keen on you having it. Um, mainly because um, when that, that request was made, they were delivered 880 pages of information categorised like this. And I'd just like to very quickly run through some of the stuff. Obviously, the, the standard stuff, the, the name, address, date of birth, friends, but also things you might not expect, like the messages you've deleted, events that you didn't decide to attend, the last location you accessed Facebook from, a list of every single machine you've ever logged into Facebook from, who's poked you, and your religious and political views. And so I come after something of a pre-credit sequence to the thesis of, of my very brief provocation. Um, I believe that it's, the issue is not how much data is being, is being um, created and stored about us, but that it's not being given out to enough people. It's not being used in the right way. I believe that the, the problem is the limitation of information. And I'm an advocate for and a great, a great supporter of um, the Open Knowledge Foundation. The Open Knowledge Foundation supports the principles of open data and open government. Um, and and it's, it's about making that data that, that governments, um, business, authorities um, harvest, making that available for, for use by the citizenry. Uh, and and it, it works on, on the principle that data must be complete, primary, timely, accessible, machine processable, non-discriminatory, non-proprietary, and that it must be license free. And I don't have time to go into the, the, the number of, of archives, sites, and mashups that are using open data at the moment. And they're proliferating so fast that, that anything I gave you would be redundant. But I think it's profoundly important that we support open data, that we make our own data accessible through uh, the principles of, of open data. But it's not just these legitimised sources that are important. There are entities like, like WikiLeaks, LulzSec, Anonymous and Pirate Bay. Um, and the great strengths of, of, of these sources of, of data and information um, is that they're independent, they're unofficial, they're anonymous, they're unaccountable. The great issue 
with, with these, with these um, services is that they're independent, unofficial, anonymous, and unaccountable. And that's a problem. I, I, it's a problem which I think can't be resolved. Um, if you are going to create entities which access data that governments don't want you to have, they are always going to, to, to have to work outside of accountability. I don't think there's any way around this. I want to talk about Pirate, Day, uh, Pirate Bay because that is a service which is probably providing the greatest bulk of data, and it's also doing some of the most interesting things. Um, this is uh, from their, their new visibles section, which is, um, which is sharing, pirating, if you want to use the term, um, 3D meshes that can be printed, uh, that can be 3D printed. So in other words, it's no longer um, films um, or music or um, uh, books which are being shared, it's objects. Objects are being openly shared now through, through uh, and um, this is uh, one set of objects which are available um, both through Pirate Bay but also through Fat Labs. This is the Universal Construction Kit. Um, this allows you to marry up uh, your Lego with your connects um, or with any one of 12 proprietary construction kits. Several of the construction kit companies tried to prevent this being made. They, they made legal challenges against it because they hated the idea of people mashing up construction kits. <laughs> Extraordinarily short-sighted. But I, I want to uh, conclude by talking about transhumanism. Transhumanism um, is the, it's the area of, of uh, philosophy and of science um, which posits the possibility that we are becoming um, non, uh, we are becoming post-evolutionary or post-biologically evolutionary, that that um, our our kind of our scientific, our technological, and our cultural artifacts are actually the the, the new extension of of our biology, the, the, uh, of, of our evolution. That that's where we're evolving into. I'll just read you a quick quote from um, Hans Moravec, who's a faculty member at the, the Robotics Institute of, of Carnegie Mellon. He says. What awaits us is not oblivion, but rather a future which from our present vantage point is best described as post-biological or even supernatural. It is a world swept away by the tide of cultural change, usurped by its own artificial progeny. Um, one, of the, one of the main tenets um, of transhumanism um, is that we will eventually reach the stage where we have um, direct neural interfacing. Um, and obviously what's leading it um, is, is work in the area of disability, um, where, where people are wanting to seek mechanisms for direct mental control of prosthetic limbs um, and, and of kind of similar, similar things. Um, this is a very powerful driver. And what I think it must inevitably mean is that in the next 20 to 50 years, we will see direct neural connection mediated by technology. In other words, we will be able to access each other's minds. I think this is a given. Um, it may not be in the short term. I think it must be in the long term because of the way that the research is going. When this happens, that data, that last bastion of privacy inside your head is going to be incredibly valuable to, to government and to big business because that's 24 karat truth. That's opinion, that's intention, that's every bad thing you've ever done or, or ever intended to do. And that may seem like a bad thing, but I think it's only a bad thing in the same way that the rest of the surveillance data is, if you limit access to it to those people who want to manipulate you. But what I suggest is that if we ever do reach that future, that what we actually need is what I would call open consciousness, that we need to make our minds available to the greatest number of people that we possibly can. And I don't pretend that that first moment of going completely naked to the rest of the world won't be terrifying. It will be like standing before God at judgment. But I'm interested in the moment after that. What's it going to be like? What's it going to be like when you share everything that's in your head with everything that's in everybody's other head, everybody else's head? In a, in a completely non-pejorative term, it will be a great global mindfuck. Or, or perhaps more accurately, a mind orgy. And I think that could be beautiful. Thank you. <laughs>